Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at Unreliable Wizard, a solo-only little quick adventure game. I'm going to do a full playthrough and then give you my thoughts at the end of the video. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and say hi on our Discord. So in Unreliable Wizard, it's sort of a JRPG trope. You are trying to go through this land, gathering allies and more magical knowledge, until you eventually get to Terra, the Demon Lord. And if you defeat him, you win the game. You move around these little hexes. Entering each one costs you a certain amount of life points, the little minus value there. Whenever you get to a hex pointing to one of these cards, you'll have a battle. The yellow cards are easier enemies, and then the red cards are tougher. And whenever you move into one of these yellow spaces, you'll recover that many life points. You have 30 life points in the game to start. As you take damage, it'll go down. Healing effects will make it go back up. If you ever go down to zero life, you don't necessarily lose. It depends on whether you have any companions with you because you can sacrifice them. Like I uh, randomly started out with this porcupine buddy. You can sacrifice them to bring you back up to eight life. But if you uh, go down to zero life when you have no companions, then you actually lose the game. And when you go into battle, you'll use spell cards of different colors and orientations. And you'll shuffle them and draw some randomly. You pick him and you draw. You suffer life damage for each card you draw, so the bigger spell you try to cast, the more damage you take. But then you try to create combinations of colors and shapes to deal different amounts of damage in three different colors, three different like sort of types of resistances, all trying to defeat the enemy before you take too much damage. We'll see how that works once I actually get into the play. It's a pretty straightforward system. Now you always start out with the three basic attack spells in your hand. And then additionally, you get two more ability cards randomly. I've gotten the bottom red, which can combo with the top red to do a four damage red attack instead of two. And I've also, as I mentioned, randomly gotten one of the companions. Uh, for overall leveling, there are five companions, uh, four more spells, and then an upgraded spell book, another grimoire that gives you more options. Now, whenever you get an ally like this, you can pick which way you want to orient them. You'll get a different ongoing ability and different boost to your attack stats. So if I have the porcupine this way, I'll get a free damage in green and blue every battle. And also it'll protect me from taking one damage every time I move through Ocean. That's one of the terrain hexes in the game. Alternatively, I can get two red and one blue, so a bit more overall. And one specific type of enemy, some of them will have this symbol, will lose two damage at the beginning of the battle. So overall, this one will save me more life in traveling, but this one will make me stronger in combat, and I love having more free hits. See, I'm going to go with that side of the porcupine. You just kind of slot it underneath, because as you add more allies, you'll be uh, building this up and getting more of these white squares, and you'll also be slotting in the enemies, and they'll have darker squares that will combat your attack and block your hits. All right, so that's the start of the game. Let's start moving. So at the start, I'm on this jungle here. And I can fight this enemy or this enemy pretty easily. This one's going to be a fight in a village, VI, this one in a jungle. Village has better defense against red. Jungle has better defense against blue. Right now, my companion is giving me a big boost to red. So let's fight the one in the jungle first. It should be a little bit easier. So that'll be two damage and then zero when I go into the fighting space. So I just take down my life to 28 for the two I took. And then I take the enemy there and I set it up. So first of all, we're in a jungle. So I slot this little thing above my companion with the jungle showing. And then I put this dodo enemy. I guess I'm going to make the dodo go extinct again with their own defenses. And this creates their overall defensive landscape. They've got one block in red against my two automatic damage from my porcupine, two blocks in green, and I've got nothing, and two blocks in blue, and I've got one. So I'm at like a minus one here, a minus two here, and plus one here. So as expected, I really want to hit them in red. And you mark their overall life here. And oh, we got really lucky. Look at this. The uh, porcupine's ability says that these type of enemies suffer two damage at the start of battle. So boom. So we've got to do one, two, three, four. You got to get past the little tracker to defeat them. So we're automatically doing one damage in red. Which means if I draw this card, we'll be doing three damage. If I do draw this card, we'll be doing five damage. So I want to put both the reds in there. And then I have a slightly easier time doing blue damage than green. The basic green spell does two green damage, two white blocks, if I draw this top green spell. And that would still not get through their armor. So green is literally useless to me. So you always have to build a deck of at least three cards, but you can use as many as you want. So I'll use these three and leave out the green that's useless. 
And then you shuffle them up and you decide how many cards you want to draw. It has to be at least one and up to four, but you cannot draw every card. You are an unreliable wizard. That's the name of the game. So you are never quite sure what spell you're going to cast. You're like, oh, what's the guy's name from uh, The Last Unicorn? Oh, uh, Schmendrick, Schmendrick. You're like Schmendrick the wizard. Okay, you're just totally messing up your spells. Okay, so I'm going to go for two and I'm hoping for either top red and top blue or top and bottom red. I think either of those might help me win. So because I'm drawing two cards, I take two damage. Wait, I was at 28, wasn't I, from moving through the jungle? Yeah, so there we go. Should be a 26. And let's see what we got. Hey, that was great. All right, so this was a great draw. I'm doing four damage if I combine the top and bottom red. Plus two is six. Minus one is five. That'll already kill him, but you do check the other colors as well. So zero green minus two is zero. You can't get like negative damage from colors that they're blocking. They just block hits. And one minus two is also zero. But yes, we do more than enough. And whenever you defeat a monster, you gain this much health back. So two in this case. And they uh, go back to the map to show that you've already defeated them. And the best part is there's an ability card under each of the monsters. These are the missing spell cards and companions. And here I got bottom blue. So now I can try to cast a double blue spell as well as a uh, double red. All right, well, that worked well. We could skip some monsters, but usually I find that it's better to go after all of them. So I'll take one damage and then move in here. And this time we're fighting in a village with one inherent red defense. And we're fighting against Darrow as another red. So our red is evened out and our blue is evened out and green is a little bit weaker. So it's not like totally terrible to draw any color here, but I do want to maybe get red or blue more. No bonus for my porcupine's ability. This guy doesn't have any symbol here, but he's only got three life. One, two, three, and he'll be dead. Oh, and I didn't say uh, after you attack them, if they're not dead, they deal the amount of damage underneath their current life. This guy's always three, but the dodo I fought before, once he was weaker, he'd be one. Some other people actually hit you harder as they get more hurt. All right, so what I want to do here, um, so drawing a red and a blue would do four damage if I got top red and top blue. Drawing a red and a green would do three damage. Ooh, actually, any combination, this is pretty silly, any combination of top cards, which each will do two damage by themselves, will win for me. Whereas if I take the bottom cards, I have a chance of drawing like a bottom red and not the top red, which is nothing. You always see for these combos need the top red plus other things. So yeah, I'm just going to actually build my deck. It has to be at least three cards of all the basic ones. I'll draw two, hurting myself down to 25. And here we go. So that's going to cast the basic red spell. Two plus two is four. Minus two is two damage. And then green, uh, two minus one is one more damage. So that's three. Blue evens out, and we do three and defeat him. Easy peasy. We only heal a single damage there, so we didn't get much. But, oh, Jesus, I don't really want this this early. <laughs> this is another uh, card you get from the ability deck. It's your Grimoire level two. You can still cast the basic spells, but this gives you other options. You can now combine colors in lots of different interesting configurations to do a crud ton of damage. Or, for this specific one, blue, uh, top blue, gray, which I haven't found yet, and bottom red, you heal eight damage. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't have gray. <laughs> could I do the top and bottom blue? I guess I could, yeah. I could cast top blue, bottom blue, uh, top green, bottom red for two red and eight, uh, ten green. But I don't think I need to do that much damage against these basic enemies. So yeah, this is kind of unfortunately not a great one to get early on. I would have much rather had a companion or another spell, but so it goes. All right, what do I want to do now? It's a pretty straight shot to the last level one enemy, and then I can circle back around and get this six healing. So sure, let's go minus one. Minus two into a planes battle. That takes me down to 24, and I'm in the planes, which has green defense. That's great, because that's uh, the only one that I don't have any attack for anyway, so I'll just totally ignore it. Well, if the enemy lets me, because their defense might affect it. Okay, it's against Toe, and cool, he's got no red defense at all. That's going to be awesome. Um, and then he's got complete green defense, so even if I get uh, my basic top green spell, it won't hurt him. And a little blue defense. So what's my best option here? Even just getting top red will do four damage minus zero and kill him straight up. Getting top blue is fine. Getting top green is literally worthless. So I got to build a deck of three. I guess I'll go top red, top blue, bottom blue maybe? Because top red, bottom red is kind of overkill. But if I get unlucky and don't draw top red... Yeah, how would this work? If I get top red, I kill him. If I don't get top red, but I get both of these... That'd be five minus two plus two more. So that would still kill him. Yeah, so this seems good. If I, if I take these three, I think there is no combination where I don't defeat him. 
by drawing one, two damage by drawing two cards. So let's see if I did that right, though. Okay, so we got top and bottom blue. That'll be four blue attack. So I'm doing two damage from my companion for free. Plus uh, four plus one is five minus two. So that's three more. So that's five damage. Yeah, one more than I needed. And I get one healing. That went great. And oh, I got a companion this time, Paladin. So once again, we have an option. We can do this one. These type enemies lose two damage at the beginning of the battle. It's a one-time effect. Or this one protects you from losing one damage from moving through Labyrinth. That's the L terrain, which is only the very top of the board before we fight the Demon King. So at most, this might save me like two life. But I think I might actually still go with this one because look how well it combos with my Hedgehog. It's the exact same colors I already have, so I'm going to be really hammering home red and blue attacks. Four automatic damage every time, even if they have some good defense, that'll probably get through. And two automatic attack, whereas if I did it this way, my blue would be good, but that green is kind of wasted. Like, I don't know if that's going to be enough to be worthwhile. So yeah, we'll go with this one. So the ability to take less damage from Labyrinths really won't come into play until, like, late game. But otherwise, I feel good about that. All right, but now all we have left are tougher enemies. I have not gone. You can only use these uh, little healing spots once per game. I have not gone to either of them yet. So usually what I do is go, like, merp, merp, merp is kind of my, like, usual path in the game. So sure, I'll go minus one, minus two, plus six. So that's minus three overall, or sorry, plus three overall. Minus two is plus one overall. So I lose one life in the wash. Whereas if I'd just gone one minus three, I would have lost three lives. See, I'm down to 22. And I'm fighting in the desert, which sadly is really good. Red defense. Oh man, this guy's got even more red defense. So red is even, four versus four. Green is a complete blowout. I can't possibly benefit from that. And blue, I have a one advantage. So blue is actually my best here. And that symbol does not match the hedgehogs. I'm not getting any bonuses. This guy has a lot of life. Whew, this is going to be a tough one. So I'm thinking, I definitely don't want to use my one green. Maybe I use all my blues and reds and draw three. And I hope for like, you know, a double top bottom pair and a top. Worst case, I might get a bottom I can't use, but I should still get through a decent amount of damage. Sure, let's try that. So that's uh, make a building deck of four. I'm going to draw three. So that's one, two, three down there. And what do we got? Ah, darn it. Okay, so that blue bottom by itself is worthless. <laughs> but the top and bottom red is four, which means four minus four is, uh, no, eight minus four is four damage. And then the blue by itself is getting one more through, so that's five damage. So that gets him, oh man, right to his four higher damage value. That was not great, so boom. Okay, now I got to go again. I'm automatically doing one damage from the blue. So any top card will kill him except, oh crud, except for green. So if I put top blue, top red, and green in, I can just draw one card and I have a one third chance of not killing him and taking four more damage. That seems dumb. <laughs> so what I could do instead is just draw two of them and then I'll be safe for sure. So okay, I'll take two, two damage instead of one. Uh, bummer. And okay, I did draw the green, but yes, the red, that's two more damage plus one more. We killed him. We only get two healing from that. So man, we are pretty low now. Thanks, Lobi. Ooh, but we got the gray spell. So for the basic spells, that means now I can combine that with a top and bottom. To do six damage, like that would be six red. Or with the Grimmar level two, I can do like double color combos to give me a bit more flexibility in my draws, including now I can do that healing one with top blue and bottom red. Because yeah, I have bottom red. In fact, the only spell I'm missing, I've gotten a lot of spells and not very many companions. I'm only missing now bottom green and I'm fully spelled up. So almost every card I'm going to get from now on is a companion. All right, Lobi, thanks. So I'm going to do my plan. Take two damage, get four back. Take one damage, take one damage. That just evens out, so I'm right where I started. And I'll go here where they have two blue defense. I'm getting all the things that I'm bad at first. <laughs> Where's, like, the green defense space over there? Yeah, but at least red will hit pretty hard this time, hopefully. I'm in a volcano, and I'm fighting Zaza. Sounds like the, the bird from Lion King. Uh, so, ooh, only one. Boom! I'm hitting for three right off the bat for red. That's awesome. Ooh, and I do get my hedgehog's bonus. Or porcupine. Was he a porcupine? Um, either way, he's doing two damage. Blue is not great. Green is terrible, so it's kind of red or nothing. But I'm doing three damage automatically in red. So one, two, three. So I need to do three more damage somehow to kill him. So clearly red, red would be enough. But I don't know if I'll draw that. Um, in terms of blues... Top blue still would not do any damage by itself. Top blue, bottom blue would do two more damage, which would not be enough by itself. Hmm. 
Now I could put in the gray. Clearly top red, bottom red, and gray is killing him, just like top red, bottom red by itself would kill him. Um, if I get blue, gray, red, I'll heal eight, <laughs> which will make up for uh, any damage he might deal to me with this one. Now, if I get blue, blue, only two damage gets through. I only do five to him. He's got one life left. If I get blue, blue, gray, I kill him. So do I maybe do like a deck of this and draw four? It's kind of overkill, but I think maybe there's no way I lose with that at least. Because it would be the worst if I drew four. I could get bottom red, bottom blue, gray. No, and even then, yeah, I would. Okay, so I think four might be overkill, but I'm, I, I know I win if I do it. So at least that's good, I guess. Hmm. Oh, so I did get the healing spell if I want and not killing him because this does nothing. Or I could kill him with top blue, gray, bottom blue. That'd be six, eight, minus four is four damage, plus three more. So yeah, I could kill him now. Or I think the healing spell is better because I'm healing eight and then I took four for drawing and I'm going to do three damage automatically for my red. So he'll only do three. So I'll take seven damage and get eight. So yeah, in the wash, I actually gained the life for this round of combat. That seems great. So yeah, we're, uh, I'm getting eight. So four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm doing three automatic damage with my red and I take three back. So I'm at 16. As we go into another round of combat. And now I will kill him no matter what. <laughs> so I could take the chance of trying to cast a healing spell again. Or just draw a single card. Because you always have to draw at least one card. And just mop the floor with him automatically. Hmm. The healing spell is actually kind of low odds of drawing. So I'm just going to say I'm going to draw whatever. Like, one card. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I take one damage for drawing. I do three automatic. I get three healing back from him. And that's all she wrote. And I get a new companion. Ooh, it's the princess. She's uh, one of the best ones. There's two different princesses in the game. I just randomly picked one. So let's see. Top, she gives me plus one to every attack. And at the end of every combat turn, the demon lord loses two. So great for the final battle. Or no bonus to attack, but she protects you from losing up to two damage when drawing magic cards. Well, I've kind of been going aggressive here, haven't I? <laughs> I like the idea of boosting all my attacks even one more. And it'll be great when I get to the Demon Lord and have that automatic damage. So yeah, we'll try with that one. All right, so we've got uh, this guy over here and then an auto healing spot and then another big auto healing spot, another monster. I think I'll, I have enough life to beat the boss probably. So three, four attack and then I'll head that way, I guess. So yeah, minus four life, which does put me down pretty low. But I'm fighting in a city, which is minus uh, one, four blue and green. But my, my red is totally fine. Ah, but he's got really high red. Okay, we're fighting Koru. Yeah, so I'm doing two automatic damage in red and one automatic damage in blue, and I don't get auto damage. I guess what the Paladin would have given me. So what is that? That's three automatic damage. So I just got to do two damage, but I can't do damage if I draw green. All right, so I think the safe bet here is to get red and blue and then, like, just something else and just draw an extra card. Yeah, so I don't know, like, I'll just take these two, and then so I'm taking two damage, drawing two. Hey, I did two red damage, so <laughs> that's five, seven minus three is four damage, and then three minus two in blue is five damage, dead, heal two, at 14 life, cool. And, oh, I get the last spell, which means the final two cards remaining are the last companions I haven't gotten. Uh, I'm a little low on life, but we'll see how we do. All right, so I've got this three healing spot here along my way, and I've got this eight one here. Uh, what makes more sense? Probably like three, fight, eight, fight, eight, demon? Sure. So we'll go minus one, uh, plus three. So that's plus two overall, minus two. So it evens out. And I get here. I'm fighting in the ocean. Oh, which totally nerfs my red. That makes sense. <laughs> if red is fire. I'm imagining my like fantasy star two. Pl oh my God. We're not fighting with red. <laughs> RO says no, no. Well, I mean, actually, we're only minus one overall. Same with green. We're minus one and we're plus one in blue. But yeah, this guy's going to be tough. Okay, he's got a lot of life, but if I can just get him pretty hurt in the first round, he will not hit me too hard back. All right, so I have every spell now. Let's look at like our Grimoire 2 option. So blue and green are best. So I want to go for like maybe this one or just the basic blue, green, gray. So what if I do like both blues, both greens, and the gray as a deck, and then draw, so no reds, and then draw four out of five? Let's try that out. The four takes me uh, down to 10. That's not good. All right. And we got the gray. That seems good. And we got, let's see. Yeah. So we got this one. 
So that'd be plus four green, plus two gray, or we can just do plus six green. I think it was kind of even out, right? Because that'd be like seven minus two is five. Um, and then three minus two is one. So that'd be six damage or five minus two is three. Five minus two is three. Yeah, so it's six damage either way. So it doesn't really matter what we pick. And that's not enough, is it? Four, six. Darn it. <laughs> so he hits us for two more. We're down to eight. Um, and now we're doing one automatic damage and we're minus one everything else. We got to plank him with a single spell. So I can just do the basic thing. Put in top green, top red, top blue. Pick a single one of them. And it's top red. So my red is five plus two, seven minus six is one. And then my blue automatically does it. Cool. So I get two back. Gosh, I'm hurt. <laughs> and I've defeated him. We get a second to last companion. This is the monk. So I can either do two damage automatically to this type of enemy. The chances that the final card is that type of enemy is pretty darn low. Or I can take one less damage when moving through volcanoes, which I've already passed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just pick this side because it has this has two green and one red. This has one green and one red. So either way, I'm getting the same uh, basic benefit here. So, yep, I doubt the ability will help, but maybe I'll get lucky. All right, now I need some dang life. So let's go minus two, minus four, plus eight. Minus two, minus two. So, oh God, that leaves me even. <laughs> I'll be stuck with my nine life for the final fight. And then I can get that plus eight. Yeah, let's try it. I, mean, I do have a ton of companions now. I'm pretty strong. Where are we fighting? This one's in the labyrinth, which is mainly impacting green. Who's the enemy? Hey, look at that. It's actually <laughs> the bonus. So I'll do two free damage at the start. Awesome. So... Boop. Okay, so what are we looking at? Ooh, he has almost no red defense. You are done, son. Four, five, six. So that's four automatic damage. He's already one away from death just for my companion. And then tied on blue, two short on green. Ah, so we're in one of those situations where I need to just slightly do enough damage. So let's be safe about it. Use all the basic spells and draw two of them. So I know that I won't get just green. Let's see. My first draw would have been red. Okay, so he would have been dead anyway. And blue. Super dead. Took me two life. But it means that red becomes eight. Minus two is six. Blue becomes uh, five. Minus three is uh, two more. So eight. So, oh my gosh. And I get four healing back. Yay. We get our final friend. He shorted weight for a while. The hero. So his uh, side, this one's going to be pretty obvious. I can either have this side where all terrain types only cost one heart to move through. That's actually a tough choice at the beginning of the game. But enemies get plus one defense on everything. He actually helps the enemies here. But this one, no combat help. But look, at the end of every combat turn, the enemy loses one life. So between that ability and the princess doing one, uh, two damage specifically to the demon lord every turn. I'm going to do three damage for free every combat turn, which is great. Okay, now I need to get to the demon lord. Uh, so I, my paladin, it was a paladin, I think. Paladin's ability is finally going to come into play. So this these labyrinths only cost me two life. So that's minus two, plus eight, minus two. So I get plus four overall before I get to the castle. So yeah, I'm at 15. Half life going into the big battle, but I got all the upgrades. I got Really strong red attack, decent blue and green, automatic damage out the wazoo. We'll see how it goes. So the Demon Lord, though, has great defense. <laughs> he has his own inherent three against everything and the castle's two against everything. So, yeah. And he's got a crud ton of damage. And he also heals two at the beginning of each round. But I deal three because of the princess and the hero at the end of each round. So I'm going to slightly outpace his healing factor here. All right, now I wanted to slam him in the face. Now, the best spells in the game are these, but to fire those off, you have to get top blue and bottom blue in the same draw. So <laughs> they can be a little problematic. Now, what I like to go for sometimes is like this kind of combo. So I include top blue, bottom blue, top green, bottom red, and gray, and then draw four. And I should be able to get something reasonable going on. Okay, so I'm going to draw four. It takes me down to 11. And we'll see what we end up with. Okay, ooh, ooh, did we get it? Yeah, we got one of them. We got a uh, doop, a doop, a doop, a doop, a doop. That is a lot of damage. <laughs> Although it's green, which is not as strong. He's got some extra defense. Okay, so red is two plus six, eight, minus five, three damage. 
10 plus 3 uh, is 13, minus 5 is 8 damage. So 3 plus 8, 11 damage. And then uh, Princess and Hero, so that is 14 damage right off the bat. Feel pretty darn good about that. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We almost uh, one-shotted him. And he only does one damage to us. <laughs> you suck, Demon Lord. <laughs> I am the master of magic, and you cannot stop me. Okay, beginning of the round, he does heal back up to there. But yeah, I mean, this is this is done. I'm doing... How much am I doing? I'm doing one automatic damage in red. That's not as much as I wanted. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, holy crud, holy crud. Yeah, I definitely got good combos this time and had my companions facing the right way. I'm doing one automatic damage in red, and then three automatic damage from the princess and the hero. So he's dead... Without a spell. <laughs> He's dead without a spell. Oh, it's silly. All right, well, let's, let's still draw. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, we'll do the same thing as last time because it's fun. So, four uh, damage to myself. And what you got, Demon King? Oh, that seems like not as good. Um, oh, I got top green, gray, bottom blue. Yeah, that's the best I could do. Okay, so that would get me. Bottom red is nothing. So I do one damage from red, four, seven. So two more damage from green. So that's three. And then two, five. Oh, no damage from blue. That was a terrible casting. But it's okay because he's dead anyway. You have been conquered, demon lord. And yay, all of us celebrate, including the hero who we didn't really pay attention to. Um, yeah. So that was Unreliable Wizard, the base game. There was an expansion that they sent me as well. That's a little bit tougher, but... I think that might be a Kickstarter exclusive, I think I read online. So I'm not really focusing on that too much if you can't even get it too easily. But yeah, what are my thoughts on this one? So <laughs> this is going to be a pretty mixed review, I'll tell you right off the bat. On the positive side, let's focus on the positives. Game's really quick. It's really easy to set up. It's it's smooth to play. It's fun. It's cool to like level up. The little choices to like which spells to cast. And you saw sometimes there were some cool like decisions and tactics around probabilities and like guaranteeing a win no matter what I draw. That can be pretty cool. It's fun to get the companions to level up. The combat's quick. It's a little roguelite. It doesn't take much time. It's light and breezy. It's fun. So those are the positives. The negatives. There are a lot, unfortunately. Uh, the same stuff happens every game. <laughs> I have almost no reason except for like very minor variations to change the path I take every game. Like I just find it a little bit too obvious. Now they do have a quick mode where you uh, like get less stuff. And in some way this is almost more interesting because you have a little bit more variety of how you level up and such. Um, but still it's pretty obvious which way to go. And even in the expansion, which does kind of spread out the map more and you have more choices, I found myself following sort of obvious paths because these healing spaces are too strong. It's too strong to get all the enemies. Like, honestly, I think to make it more challenging and interesting, you'd have to like house rule things to make it. So I don't know. You can't like move laterally. You have to always move forward. That would certainly make the game more challenging. But yeah, so the, the, the movement gets repetitive. The gameplay gets repetitive. Uh, the balance is weird. <laughs> I have always won. I've never lost. Actually, no, no, I did lose one time. If you get only spells early on and like the Grimoire level two, especially as your two uh, basic starting things, then the game can be a really big challenge because you might not draw your spells right. You might like get bad luck and they can hit you, hit you, hit you. If you get companions, you win. If you get companions, you win. I, I don't know how else to say it. Unless you like actively pick the worst powers and the worst bonuses. This automatic damage is just so strong. And you saw that like I was just doing free damage to the enemy so frequently. So if you get your companions early, you're going to win. And even when you get them kind of like mid game, I found that I still won. I played the game uh, seven, eight times at this point. I've lost one game and it's because I literally never drew a companion in like my first five fights. And <laughs> I just cast my spells poorly and died. But yeah, like the companions are not well balanced. We didn't even see this, but if you die, you can throw away a companion to heal eight life. So... Again, as long as you don't lose like early to mid game, I don't see how you could possibly lose unless you're just playing really badly or can literally never draw a spell to save your life. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a weird feel. I think with some house ruling, it could be tougher. Like I've seen some people play where like they can't lose a companion or they lose. Um, but yeah, I, th I think in the rule book, they only have official variants for making the game easier, not harder. It's like, they're assuming that it's really tough. So I don't know if I'm playing some rules wrong, let me know. I scoured BGG. I, I talked to as many people as I could, and, and it doesn't sound like I'm playing anything wrong, but let me know. So yeah, I don't know. This, this one is a hard recommend. 
I really love salt and peppers uh, games, you know, the witchcraft and resist ones that my friend David designed. Those are amazing. They're like two player competitive ones look pretty cool. But this one, I don't know. I don't know if like the Japanese version was tougher and they like accidentally changed something and messed up the balance. But I find this one sort of laughably easy. It's kind of overly repetitive. It's not that there isn't joy here. It is still fun to play. Like I hope you saw that in the playthrough that it can be enjoyable. But yeah, this is mostly a miss, unfortunately. So not a strong recommend for me. And like the expansion is a little bit tougher, but I still have won that in both the times I've played it. So yeah. Not, not, not a big recommend. Sorry, Unreliable Wizard. <laughs> Still a bit of fun, but I would tell most solo players to give this one a pass. So yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.